Call the meeting to order the uh, Erie MPO Technical Advisory Committee uh, meeting for Wednesday, August 12th, 2020. Uh, we'll uh, have a roll call. Do you want the roll call, Emily? I can do that. Um, okay. All right, so Dave Mitchell is present. Um, I think Leanne Parmenter, I think she joined. Leanne? I'm here. Perfect. Uh, Jason Sayers. I see Jason. All right, I will mark him as present. I see Jason's name. All right, John Tushak. All right, no John. Uh, Chuck Scalise. Yes, I see you. I'm here. Perfect. Um, Kathy Dahlkemper. Emily, I'm here. Okay. All right, honey. Perfect. All right. Um, Jeff Eden. Nope. Gus Neff. All right, uh, Danny Duran, EMTA. I saw her join. Right Perfect, all right. Eric Martin from the airport. No, okay. All right, Brenda Sandberg from the port. Perfect. All right, Jim Cardman from Fairview. Nope. Tim May from Harbor Creek. No Tim. All right, Jan Cabaday from Lawrence Park. All right, Matt Waldinger, Mill Creek Township. I'm here. All right, Dan Keene from PennDOT Central Office. Present. Great. All right, Brian McNulty, PennDOT District 1. I'm here, Emily, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, great. And for everyone who doesn't know, uh, congratulations, Brian, on. Um, being named the new District 1 Executive. Um, we're all Thank very you. happy about that. Thanks. No problem. Uh, so Summit Township, Mark Welka. Mark Welka and Matt Jonas from Summit are here. Perfect. All right, so we have some guests. Um, so it looks like there is a Paul Miller. Um, Paul, what organization are you with? Paul Miller, I'm the acting ADE for design, PennDOT. Oh, perfect, okay. All right, we have Gene from Federal okay. Highways. Can you hear me, Gene? Uh, yes, uh, good morning. Perfect. It looks like Travis Eagle from the Northwest Commission. Travis, can you hear me? Perfect. All right, Sheila Starrett. Is that Senator Toomey's office? All right, we also have Autumn Kelly from PennDOT Environmental, correct? Can you hear me? Yes, that's correct. Can you hear me? Correct. Yes, I can hear you. Thank you. All right, uh, we have Jill Harry. Can you hear me, Jill? Yes, I can. Great. Um, and what is your official title at PennDOT? 
I'm the community relations coordinator or the press officer, whichever one. We also have Tom McClellan. Tom, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Good morning, Emily. Great. Uh, we have Kathy Rosdeck. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Great. All right. And Joy Franzoli from Erie County Planning. Can you hear me? All right, so let's see, there are a few numbers that I do not know on the list. So just to make sure I have everyone counted, um, we have a phone number that ends in 2801. Who has the number with the 2801 at the end? Emily, that, that's me, I believe. This is Danny Duran. I'm not oh, okay. sure why I have two on there. <laughs> But no worries. That's usually my number. <laughs> okay, great. Unless someone else in the office called in, I'm not sure, but I don't believe so. Okay. So there's another phone number. It is 7017. So who would end in 7017? Emily, that's me. Brian McNulty oh, had, had to use the phone to, to join. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. All right, what about 4411? Jim Shaw, Erie County Maintenance. Perfect, all right. Um, and there's one more that's Mark's iPad. I'm not sure which Mark that is. Is that Mark Welka? Yeah, was it an iPad? Perfect, okay. No, thank you. I just want to make sure everyone is accounted for on the roll call here. All right. Is there anyone else I missed? I just joined in with you. This is Kathy Dalton. Emily, it's Jason. Oh. Can you hear me? Ah, Jason. Hi. All right. So Jason um, and Kathy Dalton. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Hi, Emily. This is Courtney Lyle. I'm also on. Oh, perfect. Right, anyone else? Okay, is that the roll call? That is the roll call. Okay, Emily, uh, you want to go through the virtual meeting guidelines now? Yes, so just to review, if you are not speaking, please mute your phones. And when you're stating a vote, please say your name to make sure everyone knows who you are. And so everyone knows this meeting is being recorded. Okay. I'd like uh, now to um, open up for hearing of the public, but before I do that, uh, Brian, I'd like to add uh, congratulations uh, to uh, your appointment. Uh, we have a lot of uh, faith in the work you've done over the years and we appreciate uh, your commitment to Northwestern Pennsylvania. So congratulations. I know we'll make life tough for you, but that's part of the job, okay? <laughs> so, uh, Sounds good, Mayor, thank you. Uh, now we'll open it up for a hearing of the public. Okay, not hearing anyone. Uh, I'm gonna turn it over to Emily to uh, run the uh, agenda and I will come in on the votes. All right, thank you, Mayor Mitchell. So the first item is the fiscal constraint charts from the 2019 Transportation Improvement Program. So uh, Dan Keene from Central Office, could you summarize the different administrative actions and amendments? Yeah, good morning, everyone. Emily, if you would just scroll down to the bottom. I just want to discuss the amendment that we just recently had a vote for, and then I have two informational items I'll touch on after this. Um, this is an amendment to the 2019 tip to add the local Fed aid routes using the local Fed aid line item. The uh, first one is for Raspberry Street. 
local fit aid route project in 2021. And it, we're adding $184,256 of STP funds in federal fiscal year 2021. And then the next project is Waterford Street local fed aid route. We're adding $65,744 of STP funds in federal fiscal year 2021. And the last one is 6th Street local fed aid route 2021. We're adding 250,000 STP in federal fiscal year 2021. Uh, the reason for this, if you recall, <clears throat> we voted on this for the 2021 tip for these projects to be added and included when the tip went live. Well, it turns out the let for these projects is a little earlier. So <clears throat> in order to have the projects in place and a reimbursement in, in place, reimbursement agreement in place, we had to have these projects added to the current tip so we can keep everything going. And for a 12 week advertisement, I believe. <clears throat> so then we had to add it to the, this project. So. The other part of this amendment <clears throat> or the e-ballot vote was a request to add these projects to the 2021 tip as well. So we took kind of killed two birds with one stone per se, voted on the amendment to add it to the 2019 tip, which we are committing it and doing it now. The e tip is currently over with FHWA for approval and we'll, we'll probably see approval this, this evening for that. And then the second one, we're getting pre-approval for when the tip goes live in 2021 to add these projects to that program. So all we would have to do is submit the e-stip to uh, FHWA and get an um, e-stip date and commit those projects. Are there any questions? <clears throat> Okay, hearing none, Emily, if you'd be so kind to switch it over to the NHPP increase <clears throat> informational item. I, I submitted two different. So this, this is the, the lamps that the STP funds for the local Bridges. Let's see. Should be. Am I missing one? Hmm. Uh, you probably have it. I thought I saw it on the agenda packet when it was sent out. Uh, no matter. We can <clears throat> we can touch on this one first. Um, okay, if, if you all recall, we, for the $5 fee, we submitted some projects to central office for approval for, for the $2 million that was basically supplemental to the passing of the $5 fee. And these, these projects are those projects. So we're essentially just adjusting some cash flow for the old, old road, Route 99, Lamps and Run number one, final design phase. We're, we're removing 110,000 of spike STP funds in federal fiscal year 2020, and then replenishing it with $43,334 of STP in 2021. <clears throat> and then we're increasing the PE phase for that project, uh, $66,666 of STP in 2020. And then the Lampson Road number two, final design phase, we're doing similar, we're decreasing 110,000 in 2021 and <clears throat> replenishing money in 43,333 STP in federal fiscal year 2021. I think I said 2021 for the 110,000, I apologize, that was 2020. And then we're increasing the PE phase in 2020, 600 or 66,667 dollars, and then we come down to Lampson Road number three, final design phase, and we're doing the same thing as pushing final design out into 2021 and increasing the PE phase. And we're all using the Laser Initiative Reserve Line Item. It's a statewide line item 
ran by the statewide section. It's just a placeholder for for uh, different different pots of money as a fund source. All right, Dan, here is the other Excel file. I think it didn't get transferred to the PDF, but here is the, yeah. the interstate contingency. That way it was sent out in the meeting materials. It just didn't get onto my laptop for the meeting. Perfect. This is just a, an increase to I-79 mile, mile marker, uh, 168 and a half to 178. We're increasing to 61,000 and we're using the inter interstate contingency line item as a fund source. And that's again, an informational only item. And that, that concludes all the actions that we have to discuss. Any, any questions? Okay, thank you. Thanks, Emily. Yeah. All right, the, the next item is the, the 2021 Transportation Improvement Program. So we did adopt that at our last coordinating committee meeting. So there hasn't been too much changing on the 2021 TIP yet. Uh, it has been submitted to central office and approved. So now it goes to the uh, FHWA to be approved there and then we'll go live later this year. Um, but another thing that we can talk about now is that we are looking at some deficits coming up due to COVID. Um, and I wanted to share with everyone this letter that was created by Governor Wolf to give to federal, the federal Congress to try to get more funding to roads and bridges in different federal packages for aid to address COVID. So just looking at the numbers, um, we have uh, 800,000 to 900,000 million dollar loss in highway and bridge uh, from gas and diesel tax about 50 million less in revenue in liquid fuels. So these numbers are not great. So if you talk to any elected officials or can do anything with these numbers to help bring in money to this area from the federal government, that would be wonderful. So everyone has the letter with the most recent updated numbers. Um, I don't know if anyone had any questions or wanted to comment any more on the COVID funding issues. All right, well, hearing none, hopefully we do get stimulus funding from the federal government to make up for these deficits. So um, moving on, uh, our public participation plan uh, was last adopted in 2007. So it is very old. So I would like to update that, um, but I would like the TAC to vote to allow me to begin to update the public participation plan. Um, so okay. again, it's a lot, yes. Okay, we'll, we'll entertain a motion to uh give Emily the permission to update the plan. Uh, we'll get the motion second, then I'll put it up for discussion. I motion to uh, permit Emily, this is Honey Stempta, I motion to permit Emily to update the public participation plan. Okay, do we have a second? I second, okay. Brian McNulty. Okay, Brian. Uh, it's been duly moved and seconded. Now it's up for discussion, Emily. Is there any discussion? Okay, we'll call for the vote. Uh, do you want to do roll call or do you want to do uh, affirmation? I think affirmation on this one will be good. Yes, I agree. Uh, all those who are in favor of this, please say aye. 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 Any, aye. Opposi any opposition to the vote. 
Then I deem it as passed. Okay, Emily. Thank you. All right. All right, so the next agenda item is a long range transportation plan. So this was last updated in March of 2017. And we do have to update this by March of 2022. So while that is a ways away, um, it's good to start thinking about the process now. Um, and I would like to form a subcommittee from the MPO members to be a steering committee for the LRTP. Um, in order to create that subcommittee, we do need a vote from the Technical Advisory Committee to create a subcommittee for the Long Range Transportation Plan. Okay, do we have a motion to create the uh, subcommittee for the Long Range Transportation Plan? Uh, this is Matt Waldinger, I'll make that motion. Okay, Matt made the motion, do we have a second? I'll second that, this is Honey Stemka. Okay, Honey seconded. It's been duly uh, motioned and seconded. Uh, it's open for discussion. So I will be reaching out via email to anyone who wants to be a part of this subcommittee. Um, everyone who's a voting member of the TAC is eligible to participate or anyone else who has a strong interest in being part of, of our long range transportation planning, looking 40 years in the future of what we want for this area. Um, it's, it's a really important thing to be involved with because the projects will directly feed the tip of what actually gets accomplished. So it's, it is a very important planning step in our area. So I will be reaching out, hopefully lots of Lots of people will be interested in, in participating in the steering committee. Okay, and also we'd like to have a good regional representation uh, on, the, on the subcommittee. Uh, so uh, please, uh, you know, call Emily if you have an interest or if you uh, uh, want to serve on the committee. I'll call for the vote now. We'll do an affirmation again. All those in favor say aye. 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 Is there any? Aye. Okay, thank you, John. Any opposition votes? Then I deem it passed. Okay, Emily. Great. All right, so let's move on to the Central Bayfront Project updates, which is Tom McClellan. Yeah, good morning, Emily. And before I share my screen, I'll, just, I'll go over some of the general updates, and then I wanted to share again the... Uh, our project uh, web page with everybody. But, uh, you know, the Bayfront Parkway project's been moving along really well uh, as of late. A lot, lot of things are coming together as we push toward uh, construction, which we hope to begin uh, in 2022, as soon as spring breaks in 2022. So uh, I, I address this committee or, you know, this planning partners here back in uh, March, I believe, right before COVID hit, or maybe it was February. And I brought in some displays and we set them up at the Intermodal Center, if, if everyone remembers. And, uh, you know, the, those those pictures, which I'll show again later, not a lot has changed on that, but I, I can give you updates on what has has been going on. Uh, back in the spring, uh, we, we requested to reclassify the project from an environmental assessment to a what we call a, a categorical exclusion. And, uh, you know, we, we did a press release and we went out on our website and, and uh, you know, we got a lot of comments on that. A lot of people didn't understand, you know, why we were doing that. Uh, but, you know, the main thing on that was when this project began, it, it started as a study back in 2015. And then with the study, we began preliminary engineering in 2018. So, you know, before we start a project, we do what we call the scoping. And as that scoping at that time, we didn't really know what we were going to get into. We didn't know the level of uh, concerns, you know, what threatened endangered species were out there, uh, you know, noise, pollution, uh, particulate matter pollution, uh, stormwater, you know, things that 
that you know rise to could rise to a level you know environmental justice you know what impacts are we having on the community but you know as the design progressed over those couple years we determined that uh, you know even though it's a big project it doesn't have a lot of those those major impacts to those to those resources and you know we and we had a lot of public involvement and public engagement out in the community over the, you know over the past couple of years so we we asked uh, federal highway administration to reclassify the project to the categorical exclusion and that was granted back in june you know or i guess it was granted back in april and then uh, you know we we got our environmental approved in june so uh, you know we're we're moving moving into final design here but just because that happened does not mean that we're not taking public comment you can still go to our webpage and provide public comment on the project and you know we're looking at other avenues you know using virtual tools online tools just such as this zoom meeting you know PennDOT uses uh skype and you know we're looking at maybe facebook live some kind of public involvement in the fall you know because there's still a lot to talk about there's there's a lot to talk about with aesthetics there's a lot to talk about traffic control during construction. So there's some things, you know, we're going to need input from the community and on. So, you know, those are, those are some important things that are out there as far as public feedback. I just, I just want to clarify because, you know, we're, we're getting a lot of a static, I guess that, uh, we, you know, we, we haven't been providing a, a good explanation of why, you know, not, not doing environmental studies and, and that's, that's, not the case we've we've done all the studies you know that that we're supposed to do uh we did apply for a build grant uh this past may uh we're hoping to hear something on that soon usually it takes about three or four months so we're hoping to hear something on that soon uh, as you know you know we have to work with a railroad on this project csx they're a you know big player and uh you know getting them relocated their yard relocated so we have some a right-of-way plan developed to acquire that property ahead of the rest of the bayfront property we have that in pretty good shape uh, again kind of along the lines of environmental we do uh, archaeology and and I, I don't know if anybody's noticed but we did some archaeology out by the blockhouse out by the soldiers and sailors property and uh, they did find some fort era artifacts from the american fort which dated back to, you know, 1795. Um, uh, one of the big things was a well, which we're not impacting, but, you know, it, it's very interesting when you get into a project and see all the different things you can find out there. <laughs> Upcoming here in August, we're going to be doing some geotechnical investigations, some drilling, and, th and that will be done where, uh, uh, where, our, where uh, State Street with our, our ramps coming in off the parkway will be done and, so, and some of the retaining walls that are needed there. I will also be doing some drilling for our soldiers and sailors or area as well. Uh, we're expecting a 60% design plan to come in here uh, later this month or early September. And uh, you know, that's, that's a key, that's a key, key design element that, you know, we have is that 60% plan. Uh, some of the other projects that came off this central bayfront too you know how are we going to handle traffic control during construction well PennDOT's actually letting two contracts next year uh, one on the east bayfront between port access and 12th street and in that we're we're uh, looking at helping pedestrians really get across those intersections we've heard a lot of pedestrian and bicycle issues between 6th and 12th especially, 6th, 8th, 10th and 12th, those signalized intersections. So what PennDOT's doing, and, and we went out for public involvement here in June, is uh, we're, we're narrowing the roadway by uh, pretty much restriping it. You know, we, we have a 12-foot lane out there and we're looking at making 11-foot lanes. There's four lanes mm -hmm. and that will increase the median out there to give a, a little place of refuge. And but also we're, we're gonna work with the pedestrian timing out there too, to uh, make it safer for pedestrians to get across and also update the pedestrian facilities to the latest standards. So it's pretty much a pedestrian oriented project out there. It's really not, uh, and I mean, the vehicle impacts are to slow them down and to, and to calm traffic. So that's that's one thing on the east side, but the, the bigger project I'd like to talk about too is 12th Street too. 
there's 23 traffic signals between I-79 and where the Bayfront connector comes back and heads toward I-90. Uh, we're feverishly working on on that, our, our design consultant to, to rehab or replace the traffic signals along there and create new timings. Because we, we want to encourage people to use 12th Street while uh, there'll be some you know, closures obviously to build the Bayfront Parkway. In, in addition to that 12th Street, we'll have message boards outside on I-79 as you approach the city of Erie and also on the Bayfront Parkway out near Broad and 26 as you approach the city of Erie. And again, that providing that real-time information to the public so they can make a good decision on, you know, which travel routes to go. And, and you know, after the project, you know, any events in town, you know, you know, to uh, to provide traffic control information, and you know, they'll they'll be part of our PA five one one network. So we're we're excited about that. Those parts of the project. Okay, I just I just wanted to run through the drawings again real quick, Emily. Let's see if I can share my screen. I think you should have that control. Um... It says host disabled participant screen sharing right oh. now. Hmm. It's, Are yeah. they on the website? Yeah, and, and uh, yeah, I was just going to show people the website because, you know, if you're getting questions from your constituents or, you know, the public, everything is out on that website. You know, it's, it's, it, it's, it's the most transparent project I've been involved with. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, all the drawings are out there. There's, there's a place for public comment. Oh, okay. Thank you, Emily. Yeah, I'll uh, just pull up the website on my screen. Sorry about that, Tom. Per no, perfect. This this works great. So, uh, what Emily clicked on was the environmental tab, and that that again that shows the all 373 pages of our environmental document. If you really want to take take a look and go through it, but if you're considering any of the like the noise study, the coastal zone noise, you can click on any of those links below to mm -hmm. get any of that information. Go ahead and click on public comment real quick, Emily, too show people so yeah there's where you would fill out your information to, and it's it's you know you fill out the form but over on the uh, in the second sentence there you can review what uh, what what the, some of those comments are where it says here in the, in the second sentence there you click on the word here yeah She's, so she's clicking on that. Uh, Sorry. That's okay. Thinking. Yep. Oh, I think it's downloading a PDF. That's why. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what, what you'll see here when you click on that is you'll see all the comments that people have generated on our webpage over the past couple months in our responses to them. So it's, it's again, you know, if you have a question, it might've already been asked, but you know, it's, it, we're, we're keeping the feedback and, 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 and showing people, you know, that we, you know, we are responding to, uh, you know, to their concerns or making sure they're addressed in the project. Uh, do you want to click on the alternatives real quick? Just again, we'll just go through the three intersections real quick. But like I said, this is a, so here's the, this is when you click on the preferred alternatives again. You can click on uh, Sassafras Street. Start there. See if this. See how quick it loads up. If not, if everyone remembers, Sassafras and Holland Street are the bookend roundabouts for this Central Bayfront project. The State Street is the grade separated intersection with a traffic signal. At State Street, uh, you know, and because because what we found is 80% of the traffic wants to stay on the Bayfront. And if you've ever been up there in the afternoons, like 3 p.m., you know, traffic 
trying to get out of Erie sometimes is backed up from State Street the whole way to Holland and they want to go straight and and you know that that won't occur you know once the project happens you know that will we'll alleviate that but it's not just a to alleviate that congestion that's there for certain hours of the day that the main focus of this project and, and I've tried to explain this to, to people is you know it, it's really to connect that city grid to the waterfront include those pedestrian connections that are you know could because a lot of people see the bayfront as a barrier keeping uh, you know the downtown neighborhoods from the bayfront so you know we have a lot of pedestrian enhancements and what's great at State Street is right now a pedestrian has to cross about 82 feet of pavement I believe to get across from like Hammett over to the waterfront after the project that pedestrian is only crossing 46 feet of pavement and they're only crossing against 7,000 vehicles a day as opposed to 16 to 18 that are there now so it's 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 a major major improvement for pedestrians uh we have, we're including a lot of green features uh green medians on state street plantings so i mean and you know all those aesthetics things that i'm talking about you know those are the decisions we're going to need help with over the next couple months you know what what gets planted you know what what Who's going to maintain these things? You know, when we built the Bayfront 20 years ago on the on the on the eastern side that connected I-90, you know, we we did some things out there, and a lot of the stuff wasn't maintained as well. So, we're, you know, we're hoping to find some good partners to work with us. You know, and, and you know, take ownership and pride in in this. You know, this could be a, a you know beautiful beautiful setting for the downtown. And you know, we're aware of the. Uh, studies that are out there too, you know, Erie refocused and, and their theming that, that they're for these different districts. So with that, Emily, I mean, that's, that's probably what, you know, what's going on for today as far as the Bayfront, uh, you know, a lot of the main, main, main features. I don't know if anybody has any questions right now or if they want to, uh, you know, any, any other, any other concerns right now? Um, um, this is Honey Stemka with Erie County. Uh, so I'm looking at the, the comments page on the, the project site and the last comment was from 710. Have there been any additional um, public comments since then? We've been receiving a lot of, a lot of letters uh, regarding this project and I was just curious if there were any additional comments that just might not be reflected on that site. Yeah, that that is true, honey. Yeah, we uh, yeah we have received some comments here, and you know that we we usually about update about once a month. So you know we'll be taking a look and updating the the recent comments that have gone to the website. A lot of the ones that have sent you letters or have also emailed us as well. So okay, thank you. Yep. Um, this is Kathy Dahl, Kemper, the County Executive, and uh, I'm also receiving a lot of emails and letters from concerned citizens um, around the project. And so uh, try to, um, trying to move them to the website that we're just looking at here. Um, just a couple of those comments that you just mentioned, Tom, uh, about the current pedestrian uh challenges versus what they'll have facing them and some of those other things uh is there like a one sheet or anywhere that i could get some of that detail pulled together am i if you could push ter, uh, point me to that i would appreciate it okay yeah we probably can create something like that i know you know we have some things developed but uh to, you know we can probably put a sheet together on some of that i think for those of us who've been involved from you know the early onset, um, just having something that we can easily uh, send people to this website for comment, but also uh, give them some information in a very concise way. Like you said, there's pages and pages of things to read um, on your uh, web page here, but uh, you know, giving people something quick and easy would be helpful. Okay. Yeah. Very good comment. I also wanted to ask you about the public comment. I mean, about the uh, public meeting. I know 
of course, we're in the middle of COVID uh, pandemic and those are challenging. Uh, there was supposed to be, I believe, a public meeting and it was, if I remember right, uh, a lot has gone on since then, but there's, there was supposed to be a public meeting and that got canceled because of COVID, correct? Uh, no, I mean, as part of the environmental process, I mean, you know, when it was an environmental assessment, uh, people were under the assumption we were going to have a hearing of some sort. But, you know, once the project got reclassified as an exclusion, be because of all the public comment we've had, you know. Hey, Tom, was, can, I, um, can I chime in here for a second? Yeah, go ahead, Autumn. Um, we would have had a public meeting back in April instead of the press release under the project being a CE level, um, but because of COVID, we could not. So that is why we tried to put out as much information as we could in the press release um, and taking public comment any way we could. I think Tom's already indicated, you know, we're trying to find an avenue to have um, a more interactive public meeting this fall again likely looking at maybe youtube or some other format that would allow people that don't want to be on facebook or have accounts through different other social media um but we've we've been working with federal highways um who's been working with virtual public involvement throughout the country uh, trying to find different avenues you know a way that we can engage without you know actually being in the same room together since that's not possible at this time Tom is correct, you know, when we move to a CE level, a public hearing is not required, but public involvement still is. So again, we just weren't able in the April timeframe to have that face-to-face um, -face public meeting. So um, again, we're all learning, uh, you know, to navigate this new virtual world, but um, also as Tom has indicated, public involvement never stops. Public involvement will be continuing throughout the project's uh, design and construction. Well, thank you, Autumn, and I think that's really important. Um, this is a, obviously an extremely important project for all of Erie County uh, residents, and there's a lot of interest. Um, you know, there's concern, there's excitement, and everything in between. So um, I think finding a way to engage the public, and as you said, we all have to figure out the new way to uh, engage the public in these type of projects, and so I appreciate your efforts in doing that. Yeah, and thanks, Autumn. Any uh, any other questions or concerns right now? Hey, Tom, this is Kathy Rosdick with the City of Erie. Um, just a couple of comments that I think the you and I were uh, communicating a, a while ago, and you had given me a nice little overview that I could share with City Council to some of their questions and. If, as you're turning, um, providing a one-pager on this, I think that was really helpful for us, and I'm just recommending that you could put that into some, some, something that you can hand out to others, um, because it highlighted the questions that we're all getting um, and answers to those. So I, I would suggest that as a, as a first approach. And for um, everyone else, that City Council is, hold, is holding a study session uh, on this, project with uh, PennDOT this Thursday, um, Thursday evening, so hopefully a lot of the, the questions that, are, that we're all hearing can be answered um, at that study session. Uh, we've also been having meetings, one-on-one -on -one meetings with concerned uh, stakeholders. One recently was with our West Bayfront last Friday, and one of the themes that emerged from that, just to mostly Tom and Brian for your awareness, but uh, others, is really what they were concerned was um, that the, the scope of the Central Bayfront project doesn't go far enough west of SAS, which is where their area of concern is. Um, and I explained to them that that's just the, uh, it, that's just part of this project. The scope of the project doesn't go past Sassafras. Um, but reminded them that this, there's actually a larger study, preliminary study that was done that looked at the entire Bayfront Parkway and came up with a lot of different recommendations for different segments. 
Some of those segments have moved on to further study and potential projects, such as the Central Parkway, and then they have, we have two um, east side projects that are moving forward. Um, but I think uh, sooner than later, we'll, st we'll need to start discussing what needs to happen west of Sassafras in the future studies and future improvement pro uh, projects. So I, I just reminded them that um, this isn't the end-all, be-all of the, of the improvements to the Bayfront. The Bayfront will, uh, will include more projects west of Sassafras. It just doesn't happen to be in this particular study. So I think that was a, a distinction that uh, they weren't satisfied because they want to see uh, some more improvements in their neighborhood to the water, but uh, at least they know that it's not, it's not off the radar for us to continue to look at. I know John and Leanne are also looking at ways to improve some of those intersections west of SAS, but anyway, just sharing that with the group and particularly with PennDOT. I know we're going to talk later today, too. That's all I had. Yeah, very, very good, Kathy, and you're exactly right. That 2015 to 2017 study, it identified over 30 different projects. You know, it, but, the, you know, the one that the MPO pushed forward and got funded first was the, 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 the Central Bayfront, you know, but you're exactly right. You know, there's a lot of work over on that west side, especially, you know, you hear a lot about the intersection of Cranberry and Bayfront. You know, we, we did some crossing, enhanced pedestrian crossing work there, but, you know, the, you know, so again there's there's always more that can be done over there and uh you know future projects you know we'll have to you know work them into the tip as well but at least we have the planning study done that identified those needs so yeah thank you that's important and i agree with you tom you know we had to set priorities and and the priorities were the central bayfront section and then the east side because of the fatalities and, and the yeah the pedestrian and, stuff uh, on pedestrian the east side issues. Exactly, and that's why that's yeah. the other central, or I'm sorry, the Eastern Bayfront projects are going next year as well, because of those pedestrian issues that we had out east, you know, 12th Street, and uh, especially, you know, 6th and 12th are the big ones, obviously, but. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Hey, Tom, this is Matt Waldinger from Mill Creek Township. Hey, um, one of the questions that I've been getting in some of the groups that I'm associated with um, is a concern that PennDOT is looking for traffic to double on the Bayfront Parkway. They're throwing out a, a 30,000 uh, car per day um, number. And I'm assuming that that's coming from the, the design parameters for what the intersections could potentially handle. Uh, could you just speak to that? Is PennDOT actually expecting traffic to increase on the Bayfront Parkway? Or are you just being prudent with your design so that uh, you're not undersizing anything to handle future growth. That's a no. That's a that's a very good question, Matt. And uh, yeah, I, I can explain a little where some of those numbers are coming from. You know, again, going back to that study that was done in 2015 to 2017. Again, we didn't know how the Bayfront would develop, so the growth rate that was used in that. Uh, scenario it was determining you know if it's a full build of the bayfront all the different amenities that the developers have planned there the housing the entertainment type things you know they they assume the bayfront would be up to upwards of 30 30 some thousand you know so doubling the 15 to 16 thousand that's there today well with our study you know back in 2018 before you know before COVID, before working at home and teleworking, you know, we did a traffic count and, and out there we got about 18,000 vehicles a day. And again, we went through the Erie traffic model. There's a traffic model for all of Erie County that was developed and that it, it was, and that's what was used. And in the current growth rate in Erie, you know, a lot, you know, a lot, you know, unfortunately our area, you know, there's not a lot of, uh, you know, our population has been dwindling over, I'd say, the past five, 10 years, you know. So, you know, the actual growth rate is less than 1%. So when you do that math, and when, and when PennDOT designs a project, we design it 20 years in the future. So in the year 2043, you know, we're only expecting the increase to, you know, to account for all that stuff, like you mentioned, but, you know, upwards of like 25, 26,000. So it's, 
it's it's not a doubling of traffic you know and, and you know one of the other concerns we've heard is you know with the project is we're adding adding more lanes making it bigger and that's not the case you know we're, we're taking the two signals at sassafras and holland and making them roundabouts uh, right now those intersections have right turn lanes left turn lanes They're, those roundabouts will only have two lanes on you know on on the main line and, and one north south so we're not making them football sized you know I've, I've seen things that say they're football field size they're they're about uh, you know they're about 60 yards which is a normal size you know they're, they're they're a little bit bigger than the Milford roundabout that we've seen you know and in Waterfords but you know they, they they'll handle the traffic appropriately they'll handle the large vehicles people hauling boats down to enjoy the amenities so you know that's that's a little I guess note on the traffic volumes and like I said we've been trying to dispel the the misinformation there as far as doubling the the volumes because that, that's not the case, but it, it's properly designed. Thank you. Anything else, Emily? Oh, that was great. Um... I mean, the one thing that might help everyone overall, just the the terminology categorical exclusion um, is, is clearly not um, ignoring the environment. It's not that the project is excluding the environment. Um, there's so much documentation on the website of how everything has been considered and is still being considered. But um, Autumn, would you mind just explaining really quickly, just what exactly is being excluded and what, what exactly that term categorical exclusion means so that everyone knows, because it's it's not the, the greatest term in the world. Um, yes, that I know that does, um, it is an off-putting word, especially when you're talking about the environment. Um, so as Tom already kind of just we do have, we, the project, you know, started as an EA, an environmental assessment. There are three levels um, when we are doing an environmental review on a project. The highest is an EIS, environmental impact statement. Um, that is when we know we have significant environmental impacts. The environmental assessment is when um, the environmental impacts are unknown. And the categorical exclusion is when we know that we know we have no significant environmental impacts. The word exclusion comes from um, the project being categorically excluded from further review under an EIS or an EA. So it's not excluded from environmental review, it's just excluded from um, proceeding as an environmental assessment or environmental impact statement. The same categories are reviewed and um, coordinated with the natural resource agencies, documented, coordinated. Um, so every aspect of the NEPA, the National Environmental Policy Act, which I won't go through every category, but you know, the highlights that we've heard, coastal zone, um, threatened and endangered species, water quality, wetlands, um, hazardous waste, noise, uh, cultural resources, regardless of what type of environmental document we have, all of those sensitive resources are evaluated against the project impacts. And again, when we were um, under the environmental assessment, we had gone through those reviews with the natural resource agencies, um, the other agencies that were overseeing, um, you know, the Department of Environmental Protection, the Army Corps of Engineer, and our coordination with those with those agencies and the project impacts uh, resulted in um, no impacts to those sensitive resources, no significant impacts to those environmental resources. So therefore the project met the requirements of being downscoped to the categorical exclusion. Trying to keep it brief without getting too wordy. So if, if you have any additional questions on that or anybody, you know, wants further clarification. 
So, it, you know, the most important thing is it's not excluded from environmental review. And Emily, this is Brian. If I could just if I could just add one more piece of information for the group uh, who may be hearing these these kinds of concerns um, or complaints, you know, to, to put it in perspective, we at PennDOT, just in District One, we might put out I'll say uh, anywhere from 50 to 80 projects per year. So in the last 10 years, I mean, I, I haven't run a report to actually count, but um, it could be in the 500 to 800 projects range that we have uh, delivered in the last decade. Uh, only one of those was an EA in District 1. So just to give you a, a sense of the order of magnitude, you know, we, we talked, and the reason that that one was an EA, that was Hunter Station Bridge, because we happened to, to, to uh, be building over the Allegheny River in a place with the largest population of endangered uh, freshwater mussels, I think, on the planet. So it was a huge deal for that particular reason. Um, as much as we talk about, you know, this project is so important, so impactful. Uh, I think it's an, an amazing project. I think it's going to be a huge improvement for, for all users, really. It's a great, in my mind, a great blend of, of meeting so many different needs, different modal um, needs and, and users. Uh, but at the same time, if we take a step back from it, we're not building a new four-lane highway through a, a park or a cemetery or something like that. If you really take a bird's eye view of this project, we're, we're modifying existing intersections. Uh, we're taking an area that's already a highway now and we're changing it and we're adding some features, we're adding some trails, pedestrian bridges. As Tom said, we're, we're not adding lanes even, uh, we're not displacing homes or anything along those lines. As far as that goes, it, it falls into, in our, you know, compared to all other projects that we deliver on a daily or monthly basis, it's really not that complex. Um, and so, you know, the footprint, the, the disturbance, the different things that Autumn mentioned, uh, we don't have a lot of, uh, of those environmental uh, impacts. We have looked at them, uh, but they're really just uh, not there. So just wanted, wanted to mention that, thanks. Thank you, Brian, that's wonderful. Does anyone else have any questions or concerns? Hi, Emily, this is Melissa Dixon calling. Um, I just wondered if there is something that we can post if you could send me some information to post on social media, I think it would be helpful to um, alleviate maybe some of the concerns that we've been getting or the emails. If we, if there is a, I don't know if we have a one sheet. I know that the information is available. There's a lot of information on the website, but I don't know if there's a one pager or something that we can just post for these types of questions. I, I don't know. This is Jill Harry. I, if it's okay with you, Tom, I'll field that a little bit. Oh, yeah, I was hoping you would, because I know you have some ideas <laughs> here. I, I just didn't know if we wanted to share them at this point, but go for well, it. Well, we do, we do have a, a group, a Facebook group dedicated to this project. It's the only one we have up in this corner. So it's called the Bay, Bayfront Parkway Project. So if you go to that group, you'll see there is some of this information is there, not quite in the form that you were just describing, but we did post something um, to let everybody know they could go to the page and find the information about the environmental questions that folks had. Um, listening to the conversation today, I have a few ideas in the back of my mind that I can discuss with Tom and Brian, and, and we can try to develop some things that um, we would post there, but we can also either email to you or you can share out from that group because it's a public group. So you have to request to join, but we allow everybody to join. That's just Facebook's rules there. So if you go and look for that Bayfront Parkway Project Facebook group, you could find some resources there at this point. Got it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I guess I guess I'll say, you know, we've been inundated with emails. We've been responding to those or letters. 
uh, answering those questions, some, the same information that we all just discussed here uh, today. The, the thing about answering these types of questions, I mean, imagine taking any, any person out there who, who's a citizen uh, who's, who hears this and is concerned, trying to explain some of, of what Autumn just went through of an environmental assessment versus a categorical exclusion and what's involved. There's, there, there isn't really a quick, simple way to make this concise and accessible uh, to the average person, I guess I'd say. Those, those of us who it's part of our business, we've heard uh, some of this jargon before or been around enough projects to know it. So uh, we can certainly put something together and we will do our best to keep it concise, but it's a, it's a, a complex and niche sort of, um, you know, uh, set of knowledge. So, you know, that's, that's kind of the challenge that we faced. Even, even when we get an email or a letter, we respond. Uh, sometimes our responses are, are two pages long because it's, it's so much to try to uh, explain to somebody. And then of course you run the risk of losing them if you go into to too great a detail that they just, you know, wouldn't read it, wouldn't be interested. So, uh, again, we do point people to that website, to the, the environmental document that's there. If anybody really wants to know uh, what all kind of um, analysis, environmental checks and analyses we've done, it's all, it's all there. Uh, but of course, you know, most people don't want to go read a, a 300 plus page uh, document about that kind of stuff. So it, it is a, it's a communication challenge, I guess, is, is where I'll leave it. Uh, but we are, we're looking forward to the, the study session uh, with Erie City Council. Again, that's tomorrow evening. I think it, it's on, I think it's viewable online and everything. So uh, we'll start to try to answer those questions. And then our next opportunity for public involvement, which as Autumn said, probably will be virtual. I'm sure it will be well attended because of this sort of excitement that's uh, around. We'll, we'll be prepared to answer those questions the best we can there as well. Brian, this is Honey Stenka. I don't know if this is possible with your team. Um, perhaps, um, I know you were, can, someone had mentioned utilizing YouTube for a possible um, public informational session in the future, but could you, could a video be put together related to the, the environmental assessment, categorical exclusion, the stuff that Autumn just kind of went through that, um, I, I don't know. I'm just trying to think of, of different ways to get this information out to people. Um, yeah, I just, you know, could a, could a short, a, a short of video as possible be put together with that information that then could be either put on the project website and or shared out um, when people have, have questions so we can help educate people. Um, just, yep. just a thought. Great. Great suggestion. We'll definitely talk more about that. Thank you. Brian, this is County Executive Dahl Kemper again. Um, when is the 12th Street project uh, beginning I, I'm, I'm, in terms of the actual construction of that? It would, it would start next year, next, next construction season, like in the summer. 2021. Okay. Yes. Yeah, ahead of the Bayfront project in 22. Thank you. And also maybe Kathy Rosdick could, when, what time is that council study session for those who we can uh, point them to that? Um, it's, Kathy, the study session starts at 5.30 and it will of course be virtual and it will be live on Facebook, 5.30 on Thursday. So people, the public can access that on Facebook then, thank you. All right, well, are there any other questions, comments about the, the Bayfront Parkway? All right, well, hearing none, hopefully everyone can attend that 5.30 Thursday meeting at, at on the, the city's Facebook page. Um, is there any other business for the good of the order? All right, hearing none, Mayor Mitchell, would you like to adjourn the meeting?
Okay, uh, I'll accept the motion for adjournment. So moved, Brian McNulty. Okay, do I have a second? Jason Sayer, second. Okay, all those in favor of uh, adjourning to our next meeting, say aye. 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 Okay. Anyone uh, opposing want to stay here for a month or two? <laughs> okay. Uh, have a good uh, have a good week, folks. Thank you very much for your time, and thanks for the reports. Thank you. We're we're done. Thanks, everybody.